Welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell Richards, where we will explore the complexities of compliance and how to ensure business success within your RTO. This podcast is for anyone within the training industry who wants to learn from my experience as an RTO consultant, RTO manager, trainer and assessor, and entrepreneur, as well as the experience of other experts in this field. Listen in and let us help you become the RTO superhero you want to be. Hello and welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast, the show that helps you navigate the complexities of compliance and business success within your RTO. I'm Angela Connell Richards. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the ins and outs of the future of VET and what it has in store for us for 2023. As you may already know, we're in the middle of a skills reform right now, and part of that is major changes to the VET reform as well. The government has been connecting with industry stakeholders from the training industry to get feedback on what you think about the changes that are coming up. Some of these changes include the industry engagement reforms, qualifications reforms, quality reforms, improving access to and support for foundation skills, harmonising and modernising apprenticeships to boost completion rates, support businesses and improve labour mobility, improving VET delivered to secondary students, supporting micro-credentials in the training system, improving VET data collection, use and analysis, increasing investment under a new funding model, and how you can get involved. We'll be covering these areas in today's episode. Let's firstly look at the industry engagement reforms. It was identified by the government in 2019 that there were a lot of issues with our training and the outcomes that we were achieving uh, coming out at the other end. So the government spent quite a bit of time Uh, discussing with industry, including employers, peak bodies and unions, to discover and identify what are the uh, vocational education and training requirements that they require within their industry sectors, including what are the problems that they're having with hiring VET graduates, engaging and supporting structured training for apprentices and trainees, Uh, training their own employees and in some cases working with RTOs to develop organisation-specific training. And what was discovered is that a lot of the training that was offered was not meeting the industry needs, in particular the training packages and the way that the training packages were written and how were the units uh, put together for each industry sector. And what was found is that the way the training products were put together were not meeting those industry needs. So some of the things that were identified from that is, do we really need to overhaul all of our training products to meet those industry needs? And the answer was yes. And that's one of the other areas that have come out. So from that industry consultation, we now have the qualifications reform. What is the qualification reform? So it's where the government has gone through working together to develop a new model for VET training products, including qualifications and skill sets to ensure that they are relevant to the labour market. So what was this? What did they do? So basically uh, they uh, did engagement with industry, identified how and what what could, did we need to do in order to deliver training that was going to enable learners to get jobs and also support them for upskilling and reskilling throughout their career. In September 2022, there was a jobs and skills summit that was held where w- w- they brought together Australians uh, to work on the challenges and opportunities facing the Australian labour market right now. And what do we need to do within the training sector? Some of the things that were identified was that we needed to actually change the way we deliver our training products. 
including looking at our Australian Qualifications Framework and what needs to change with that framework. At the moment, we deliver Australian nationally recognised qualifications that are at a certificate level. So we have Certificate 1, Certificate 2, Certificate 3, Certificate 4, Diploma and Advanced Diploma. The new structure that they're looking at is more at micro-credentialing. It's putting together training that is going to be more relevant for the industry sector. And that's at a level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six, and possibly level seven. What does this mean to you as an RTO? Well, let me give you an example. At the moment, uh, a really good example is the security industry. In the security industry uh, in different states, there are different requirements for the qualification. So at the moment, we have, our, for example, a Certificate 3 in security. Now, this Certificate 3 in security is not relevant in all states. So the core units and the electives are not the same for each state. So at a level, we could do a level three whereby the certificate could be issued using the individual state requirements. So that would be at a level three. These are the units that the students have completed at that level. And they'll get a certificate that still is relevant for all of the industry sector, but more importantly for that state level. And this is just one example uh, that I'm giving you, whereby a training product can be adapted to meet different industry sector needs, but also looking at different state needs as well. So that's one example. There is so much more that is going to be coming with the new Australian Qualifications Framework. Uh, We have until 2025, until this all comes out. So there's going to be a lot more that's going to be coming up with this uh, and through all of this consultation that the government is doing. The other area is the quality reforms. There is a whole review of the standards for RTOs. And as you may have already heard, we now have the new draft standards for RTOs. So this new draft standards uh, has come back through many, many consultation with all types of industry sectors and now with RTOs. So you have until the 31st of January to provide feedback on the new revised standards for RTOs, and I highly recommend that you do. The draft revised standards have been developed based on an extensive consultation with the sector, along with analysis of other sectors and expert reviews and research. Through this research, they've identified a number of structural changes that needed to happen with the draft standards. And in particular around the framework of the quality areas. These areas are designed to reflect the key components of RTO practice and are supported by a small number of focus areas under each quality area. The structure is designed to make the draft standards easier for RTOs to follow with the regulatory body required to also provide training and a user guide on how to use the standards as well. The purpose of it is to enable all users of the VET sector to more easily understand what the expectations are of high-quality training delivery. The requirements for RTOs have been placed under these quality areas and focus areas to ensure that there is a clear link between the requirements and the outcomes. So if you haven't had a look at them yet, I highly recommend that you get online. Uh, you can go to the DWA web website or if even if you just Googled draft standards for RTOs, you'll get that um, you'll get the link to that. I'm also going to add the link to the show notes so you will be able to access them there, where you will be able to provide your feedback on what you think about the standards. Now, these draft standards are going to have a major impact on you and your RTO. So I keenly encourage anybody who's involved within the training industry to give feedback on these standards. Review them, 
identify what is going to be the potential impact on your RTO and provide your feedback. There is a survey that you can complete and you can provide feedback to the government uh, on that survey. So there's a consultation paper that you can review. You can also review the draft standards for RTOs and the outcome sta- uh, statements that go with those as well. They have also provided the intent and explanation of the draft standards. So I implore you, have your say now on what these changes are going to be. Now, another area that's going to be a a big focus on in 2023 is the blueprint for the VET workforce. Like many industries across Australia, supply and retention issues are a significant concern facing the VET workforce. You may have experienced this yourself, trying to find new staff members for your RTO, including trainers and assessors, um, and actually having people... Uh, who have the skills for the workforce. With RTOs under increasing pressure to attract and retain a skilled workforce. The development of a VET workforce plan or the blueprint announced as an outcome of the Jobs and Skills Summit will ensure the long-term sustainability of the VET sector by supporting and growing a quality VET workforce. It will be aimed at looking at effective strategies within your RTO and on how you can attract, retain and have career development and succession planning within your RTO. So this is both for your administration side as well as for your trainers and assessors. And how can we attract more industry professionals into the training sector to become trainers and assessors and be able to share that skills and knowledge uh, with more people to bring them into the workforce. So these are some of the things that you need to be considering within your RTO. Do you have a workforce development plan? What are you doing to attract people into the industry sector? Uh, These are some things that I uh, implore you to really have a look at within your RTO. And watch this space. There will be some changes with the VET workforce development planning. Another area is improving access to and support for foundation skills. You may have seen that there has been a lot of changes with foundation skills courses and the government are really encouraging uh, organisations, training organisations, to have foundation skills courses on their scope. Because one of the problems that has been identified, and you may have seen this yourself, for example, I'll use an example of aged care, where a student may have completed a language literacy and numeracy assessment, and I'll be going more into that with digital skills, which is how it's going to change, and they don't have sufficient foundation skills in order to enter into that training. So what you could do is set up a foundation skills course for your RTO, for that industry sector, so that it gives that student a pathway. They can complete the foundation skills training, which will then enter them into uh, a possible qualification in that industry sector. And it will give them the basic skills that they need to participate in the workforce, as well as within the education and training for that sector. So it's really looking at a combination of the English language literacy and numeracy as well as digital literacy and the use of mathematical ideas. Also, the employability skills such as collaboration, problem solving, self-management, learning and information and communication technology. Skills required to participate in the modern workplace and contemporary work life and looking at the different skills that we need in Australia for our upcoming courses. So have you thought about this? Have you thought about foundation skills and courses that you could offer for your industry sector? I really do recommend have a look at the different uh, foundation skills courses that are out there and what could you offer as an RTO to support your industry sectors? The next area is harmonising and modernising apprenticeships to boost completion rates, support businesses and improve labour mobility. There is going to be a massive change in the focus of apprenticeships and traineeships in 2023 
because let's face it, we've had a distinct lack of applications for apprenticeships and traineeships, both from businesses and industry sector, as well as school students leaving school or even existing workers. There's going to be a big focus in government funding going into apprenticeships to fill those skills gaps. So what are you doing within Australian Australian apprenticeships and traineeships and what do you need to do? Why is harmonising and modernising Australian apprenticeships and traineeships important? Stakeholders in, in identified the Australian apprenticeship system can be complex and difficult to navigate. A modernised system with clear objectives will make it easier to promote the benefits of employment-based training. It will also improve uh, access for industry and learners. You should have a look at, at what you can do to boost apprenticeships and commencements in your industry sector. What can you do to help that? One of the good big things would be to engage with industry and identify how you can contextualise your training and offer apprenticeships and on-the-job training for your industry sector. The next section is improving VET delivered to secondary skills. So this is where you're looking at secondary school students and delivering VET within schools. As an RTO, you can do that, uh, whether it's private or public sector, you can get in there and also provide education. The Australian secondary school students can undertake a vocational education and training program at school. VET delivered to secondary school students enables them to get workplace skills through nationally recognised training while they're still at school. It has been identified that there, has, uh, there are a lot of students where HSC is not necessarily what they want to get, an ATAR score, uh, where they uh, don't necessarily want to go on to university. So a vocational qualification is going to be much more beneficial for them with their career moving forward, moving out of the school sector. There are a number of different qualifications that can be offered in VET programs within schools and they vary across states and territories. Students can also begin a part-time school-based apprenticeship and traineeship while they're in secondary school. There's lots of opportunities here and there will be lots of things that will be changing under the skills reform when it comes to the Senior Secondary Pathways Program and looking at apprenticeships and traineeships for uh, students that are still at school that want to look at a pathway into an industry sector. Another area that you may have heard a lot of uh, about lately, and I even did a podcast on this as well, is micro-credentialing. So one of the areas under the skill for reform is supporting micro-credentials in the training system. Micro-credentialing is short courses and targeted training products that are specifically meeting industry needs. But why is this important? Micro-credentialing in the vocational and training sector offer more flexibility with the delivery of training to meet industry needs. They also deliver in-time training to meet emerging and urgent skills needs that are required within your industry sectors. This is really important when you're engaging with your industry sector to identify what are their industry needs and how can you put together a course, so a selection of units that are going to meet those industry needs. And this is where you really need to do a 360 analysis or go and do a training needs analysis with your industry sectors to identify different training products that you could develop under a micro-credentialing model that would meet their industry needs. Now, there's going to be a lot of changes with this in uh, this year, in 2023, but also into 2024 and 2025. So, and also with the review of the Australian Qualifications Framework. So now is a really good time to really look at what types of courses that you could put together that would meet industry needs that would fall under micro-credentialing. 
There's also been a number of changes that are with the Vet Data Streamlining Program. The government has been really focused on how are we using data to improve the training sector and what are we doing to build new training courses that are meeting the industry needs based on that data that we are uh, that they are collecting. The program aims to introduce a modern technology that enables near real-time submission of vet activity data and there's already uh, a number of uh, data that you can access right now uh, that can help you within your RTO. It's also a vet information standard to replace the existing Australian Vocational Education and Training Management Information Statistical Standard, in short, a vet missed data, which doesn't necessarily collect the data that we need to identify the training needs of the future. So it's really going to be uh, amping up uh, how are we addressing the training needs for the industry sector based on that data that we're collecting. It's also updating the regulatory and governance settings. So uh, there will be a lot of changes that will be happening with this uh, and what is currently happening in the Vet Data Streamlining Program is that governments are working together to develop the content, to develop the content for a new vet information standard, gathering the requirements to inform the new technology developments and establish a new policy framework that's going to be working for everyone, so the student, the industry sectors, as well as the RTO. And there will be lots of information coming out about this this year in 2023 and the impact that that will have um, and in particular how we're going to communicate that uh, between the sectors. So I keenly encourage you to get in and find out more about uh, this new data that's going to be changing uh, and the anticipated benefits that the this will have on you and your RTO, including how we're going to have improved training products uh, for the industry sector and different vet sectors. The next section that we're going to cover is the increasing investment under a new funding model. So the federal government has identified that the way that they are funding training needs to change and they're changing the way that that funding model is going to be. So all governments have recognised the critical role the vocational education and training system plays in supporting Australia's future growth and prosperity, including the economic recovery following COVID. Governments and industry are working together together to ensure that Australians have a responsive world-class vet system that can deliver the skills needed for the jobs of today and tomorrow. So the government funding is really going to be focused on what are the industry needs, where are those skill shortages, and there are so many skill shortages out there right now, and how we as an industry sector, being the training sector, can meet those needs. What is it that we can do to develop training? And that's where micro-credentialing is going to come in as well, as well as apprenticeships. What type of training could you deliver that would meet those needs that could possibly be funded in the future? And this is something I implore you to really dive into for 2023. What can you do to provide training products that are going to meet those industry needs? because that's where the government funding is going to be. And if you're ahead of the game and you're out there and doing that now, you're going to be um, in the front of the other RTOs because you've already got that training that's been developed that's going to meet that new funding model need. All right, the last section is getting involved. Now, I talk about this all the time. As a being a vet leader, you should be getting out there and getting involved. So the government want to hear from you and what you think about the reforms and the vet system. They've already undertaken a range of consultation with industry stakeholders as well as uh, training organisations and they're already using that feedback to implement change within the skills reform. But there's still a lot of opportunities for you to provide more feedback and to be very much involved. 
There is a phase two of the quality reforms, RTO quality and consultation feedback. So I'll have a link in the show notes for this and where you can get involved with providing feedback to the government about what's happening uh, with the standards in particular, so giving feedback about the new draft standards. And the consultation that they're providing is not by the government. They're actually using a third party. So it's a great way for you to be able to provide feedback without it having an impact on your RTO. And it won't even be recorded that you attended the sessions uh, and they'll take your feedback and be able to implement that Uh, And it's really, really important. The new standards for your RTO is going to impact your RTO, all RTOs. So you should stand up and provide your feedback. And I highly recommend it. We're recommending it to all of our clients as well, that they're getting out there and that they are providing feedback about uh, these standards and how they're going to impact your RTO. Okay, so that's it for me today. So in today's episode, we covered the future of VET and how that's going to impact you in 2023, including the skills reform, industry engagement reforms, the qualifications reform, the quality reforms, foundation skills, apprenticeships, micro-credentialing, and what does this mean to you and your RTO? Next week, we'll be covering how to recruit when there is no one to recruit. Because as you know, we have a distinct skills shortage for the training industry sector right now. So I'll be showing you some strategies on how you can recruit when there's no one out there at the moment to recruit. Do you want to ask a question on any future episodes of the RTO Superhero? Just click on the link in the show notes and you'll be able to provide any feedback or any suggestions that you may have for future episodes of the RTO Superhero. Thanks for listening. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you for joining us at the RTO Superhero podcast with me, Angela Connell Richards. Please take a moment to rate and review the podcast on your preferred podcast app. Each rating and review helps me fulfil my goal of helping training organisations around Australia to learn and grow in compliance and business success.